Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and I'd like to do a review of Enshrouded, shall we? Now this is going to be an early review because not only is it Enshrouded in early access, and it only came out on January 24th of this year, I currently have about 11 hours into the game, I'm going to be streaming it tonight, and I'm loving the game. I've played enough of it to feel like I have a good grasp of things, but then again, there's still so much for me to unlock. So this is my early review of Enshrouded, and it's going to be subject to change as the game itself evolves, as it goes, and also as I play more of it. Enshrouded is from Keen Games, and um, it, like I said, came out January 24th, 2024, on Early Access, and is described on Steam as this. You are flameborn. Last ember of hope of a dying race. Awaken, survive the terror of a corrupting fog, and reclaim the lost beauty of your kingdom. Venture into a vast world, vanquish punishing bosses, build grand halls, and forge your path in this co-op survival action RPG for up to 16 players. And the user-defined tags are open world, survival, base building, multiplayer. I think that's a good look at the game. And if I were going to say what is Enshrouded, I would say exactly that. It's an open-world action-adventure RPG. It's kind of like you take Elden Ring and Zelda and then add in really, really involved base building, and you're kind of there, except it's multiplayer. So, given that... I've only played this game single player, and I know I've talked to some people who were kind of like maybe hesitant because they're like, well, I'm single player, like, can I do this? And I'll tell you what, yes, you can. I'm playing just single player and having a blast. So given what kind of a game Enshrouded is and, you know, giving some sort of genre type examples of the game, reading the description and the tags. Now let's move into the review. And the first thing I like to do with my review is talk about the fun factor and whether or not the game is fun. So what I'm going to do is give Enshrouded a grade, a letter grade, like it's in my class, and I will use that to evaluate my opinion of the game so far. And then in the second portion of this review, I'm going to make a recommendation on whether you should buy and play Enshrouded in the, its current state here in March of 2024. So as far as the fun factor goes in Enshrouded, this is one of the things that Enshrouded does so well. It is incredibly fun. I immediately picked the game up and was like, oh yeah, this is going to be something I want to do. Everything feels intuitive and it is fun to do. There's more and more quests and the game opens up and is much bigger than I expected. And I can't wait to do things. I mean, it's one of those games where I'm like a chicken with my head cut off. There's so many fun things that I want to go do and I haven't even been able to do them yet because, you know, like in No Man's Sky or something, another open world survival game, you get distracted by something on the map. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's treasure over here. Oh, I can rescue this person. Or, oh, what's this? You know, can I upgrade my altar? Or, you know, what can I get over here? There's just so much going on with exploring, building your base, recruiting new people to live with you, getting better loot, leveling up, on and on and on. So this game is incredibly fun. That's one of the best parts of Enshrouded. So what about the controls in Enshrouded? How is it to control your character and do the things that the game is asking you to do? For the most part, I think that the controls in this game are fantastic. As soon as I picked it up and I started moving around my character and seeing what I could do, I was just like, everything feels super intuitive. This makes sense to me. I think that the controls are very, very polished. And that's going to be a continuing theme. For an early access game, Enshrouded is a remarkably polished title. It's so fantastic to see something that doesn't have a game-breaking bug or just, you know, has a lot of missing elements to it, but is rather far along and feels very, very uh, smooth. There are some elements with the control that are, you know, less than uh, successful than others. For example... I'm not huge on the way that the glider trolls and how it lands. Sometimes the landing can be incredibly wonky, but that's that's kind of a nitpick. It, it makes sense, and it is a little bit strange that you can't climb. Like, 
I feel like, oh, I'm playing Zelda, so I can just climb up the wall here. Uh, and no, you cannot. That being said, of course you can't do that in Elden Ring either, and there are many other open world games where you can't. I just kind of expected it, um, like Pal World or something like that, another game I've been playing recently, but you can't, and that's not really a knock against the game, it's just a design choice, and it's, it's just a thing. You do get a grappling hook to kind of go up at predetermined points, and you can get a double jump and things like that, but you cannot just climb a wall. But overall, I think the control works well. I think the control in the combat is reasonable, and I think the control for exploration is pretty good, and the control for the building is uh, also quite good. Now, keep in mind, I play using a gamepad, so that might affect my experience, but that's what I like to control in Shrouded. Now, as a subset of controls, another element of the game I always like to talk about when I'm doing a review are the systems and the UI. How do the game systems work? And in Shrouded is one of those things where there, or one of those games where there's many systems. You know, you've got building, you've got fighting, you've got loot, you've got leveling, you've got interacting, doing quests uh, with NPCs, you've got exploring... So there's many elements to this game and lots of different systems and things could go wrong where you're like, well, yeah, you know, this is good, but this suffers, you know, yeah, it's fine to explore, but the combat's bad or yeah, you know, the, the combat's good, but the building's not great. But in Enshrouded, I think all of the systems are working really well. There are some elements where with maybe with combat, I would try to aim with some spells and it didn't quite work the way I wanted, but that happens in even Elden Ring, so I'm not like gonna just go completely hardcore like all oh, the systems don't work, because they work really well, and I'm not gonna nitpick too much on it, and the system, of course, that shines for me is the building, best in the genre, I think. Okay, and then what about the UI? The UI is good. The UI does what it needs to do. It explains things. Um, you've got lots of loot. There's some pretty good quality of life features with using the UI and managing your inventory and transitioning your item to chests and things like that so i'm pretty pleased with that i think it's makes sense and it's clear uh, however i do feel that the ui is one of the things that could be polished a little bit with this game as it develops uh, giving you maybe some more quality of life functionality and such just a little bit of stuff happening i think that would be nice but at the same time it works just fine now what about the story the story is good and enshrouded. The story is not something that's going to change your life, but it is something that gives you something to think about, is unique. Uh, it's cool, you know, seeing this broken world and trying to revive people and uh, build it back up. And it definitely helps make this game stand apart and just not be some generic open world survival. It has, you know, a sense of identity and presence with the story. It's, of course, not you know, in the realm of um, an Elden Ring or a, a Baldur's Gate 3 in terms of story or anything like that, but I think it's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with it. So what about the visuals? How does the game look graphically? For me, this is another one of the shining points of Enshrouded. I think it looks spectacular. Now, I love kind of, you know, soft fantasy appearance like this. I think it looks cool, but the bad guys look cool. The building looks amazing. The structures look awesome. And so I think for now, um, the visuals are great. There are, if I'm going to nitpick, there's a little bit of smokiness and cloudiness and sometimes the tears don't pop in like you'd expect. And the game's draw distance, like from far away, if you're standing up and looking around, it's not, you know, what I'm expecting. But I think that those things could come along. And for the most part, I think that this game has a nice sense of visuals and what about the sound how does the game sound how is the voice acting and the music and the sound effects i think the music is cool i think the there's not much voice acting but it's pretty funny when it happens and the sound effects are good so i would say that the overall the sound is good in the game i don't remember any of the music um and it's not like a draw but i think it's it all works pretty well now given those elements what i like to do is kind of see how it all ties together and if the game has a sense of style and, and question its style and explore that. When I think about style for games, I think, does this game have a soul? Like, is it just an empty shell following a formula? Does it, you know, feel like a generic and vague, you know, kind of 
maybe pleasant but forgettable experience, or is it unique and interesting? And for me, I think it's Shroud that has a really good sense of style. Um, and it, of course, there's some elements that are derivative of maybe Elden Ring and Zelda, but at that, that being said, it really has enough going for me to make it feel unique and its own. And I think that that is also something that can just further develop as they sharpen and hone and shrouded. So with all of those things in place, it's time for me to move into my grade of the game. How would I grade and shrouded? So I always like to look at Steam reviews and Metacritic before I reveal my grade to provide a basis of comparison and, you know, a ground for the game. Now, it's difficult to use Metacritic because this is an early access game. So critics are, you know, favorable so far of the game, uh, but I can't really give you any numbers on them at this point. However, if I bounce over and look at the Google reviews, the Steam reviews, uh, Right now on Steam, there's 37,000 very positive reviews. It's got like a four and a half out of five. And is what uh, it says here. And 92% of people on Google like the game. So that's the kind of basis I'd like to give. And I would say I'm right about there. For me, Enshrouded is an A-. minus. I think that it actually elevates above B+. I was thinking about giving it that. But I just feel like it's so much fun. And it treats the player with such respect uh, and is kind. It, it's not like a punishing survival experience that breaks you down. Like There's a lot of elements from Enshrouded, I should have mentioned this earlier perhaps, that are like Valheim. The food system is very much like Valheim and some of the building and, and certain elements. However, this game is so much nicer to you as a player than Valheim is. And, you know, you can get your body back pretty easily. Uh, you could save the game. Uh, you don't lose as much. And you can teleport around very easily, take all of your materials and things. So I feel like um, it that element to it, how friendly it is to you as a player, how much fun it is to play, the, the fact that you can just right out of the gate do... Um, huge multiplayer. It's got good combat. Things feel intuitive. Nice visuals, good music, and a, and a neat story. I think it all comes together for me to be an A- minus right now. Now, that being said, um, I think it is a game that's in early access, and you can feel it. Like I said at the beginning, it's amazing how far it is, but I think it still needs some time to cook. I think there's some still some balancing and a few more elements that need to be added, some more explanation and tutorial with some of the systems and things. Uh, there's a little bit of a disconnect with, you know, you drop people down in your house and they're just kind of there. And then they have, every once in a while they say something to you. I think just things can be smoothed out a little as the game evolves. And I might revisit Enshrouded and raise its score or lower it, depending on what my experience is. But for right now, I'm really happy giving it an A-, and I'd love to know what you think about Enshrouded. Have you played it yet? What's your feeling? Do you think my review is fair, too high, too low? What would you grade Enshrouded based on your experience so far? And um, it is worth noting I'm only playing single player, but I think it's a testament that you can play it either way and have a good time with it. So now what I want to do is move into my second portion of the review, which is like, should you play Enshrouded? And I kind of base that on initially a comparison of the game to others in the space. So it's a survival open world kind of action RPG. And there is there's feels of Valheim, of Elden Ring, of Zelda. And if you're somebody who enjoys those kind of games, I think you definitely would want to check this out. But as I've rated it so highly, and I think you can tell, it, Enshrouded feels like something that everyone could potentially try because, and I move now into difficulty of the game, I think this is a super friendly game to play. I think it's cool you could just chill out with your friends and play this. Even if you die and you're in the shroud and, you know, you perish, the game just spawns you right back. It's got respawn points all over. You can get your stuff back. Um, it's not like you have massive durability hits on your items and, you know, you, you're out of luck or anything like that. Not at all. So I think because the game is so friendly that it's, easy to recommend it based on the low difficulty and now let's move into the value 
what do I think about the value? You know, how much is the game and is it a good value for its price? Guess what? It's in early access. It's 30 bucks. The amount of content is phenomenal. It's totally worth $30. I think the value is extremely high for Enshrouded. You can play it more than once. You can play it with friends. I think 30 bucks is fair. And again, you could buy this um, and, you know, you could buy Pacific Drive and then have a AAA title uh, worth of games and instead have two games that are better than uh, any AAAs that I've played this year. So there's that. And what about the replayability? Now, that I'm not sure about. Uh, maybe it would be fun to revisit the game, but I haven't played enough of it to really say. But I think it's reasonable to state that, yes, there is replayability, because you could play it single-player, explore it, and then also play with friends and start over on a new map and see how the experience changes. Or you could replay it and try a different build. You know, you could go down into a different path and, and try a different build for your character. And that might be fun. That's something I didn't even really talk about, which is the fact that there's an RPG skill tree system in the game that's pretty fun, but it's also not one where it's like, oh, you know, I got to min-max and I got to do this. You can respec at any time. Again, a very friendly game. And you aren't really locked out of things very easily. You can kind of go all over the grid, which is awesome. So overall, I think this is a game that pretty much anybody could pick up and enjoy. I recommend it fully to anyone. I give it an A-. minus. And this is the end of the review. So tell me, do you agree with my recommendation? Do you agree with my review? What do you think about Enshrouded so far? And do you know anything about what's going to be happening in the future with the game? And are you excited about any promised updates or content? Let me know in the comments below. I do read them all, and I'd love to see what your feelings are about the game. I hope you found this to be helpful. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.